Hello, and thank you for attending our presentation. Today, Mikhail and I are gonna talk about using Grafana and machine learning for real-time image analysis and microscopy. Uh, brief introduction, myself, I'm Chris Field. I am co-founder and president at Thea Scientific. I'm also a software developer and hardware uh, person at Thea Scientific. We have with us also today, Mikhail Volkov of Volkov Labs, where he is the founder CEO and our principal uh, Grafana expert on this project. Uh, both of us will be presenting, but we also have Kevin Field, who is a co-founder and vice president at Thea Scientific, and he's really sort of the, the, the godfather of this project in a sense. It all can, came from his idea and his work and his research at the University of Michigan in Ann Arbor. So when you get to this idea of what is real-time microscopy image analysis, it's really the workflow that Kevin uses for his research and within his group, but it's much bigger than what he does as well. It basically involves capturing images on a microscope using a digital device. This can be a PC, it can be an iPad, it can be a phone, it could be a camera, any kind of something that takes images. And then you do some kind of analysis on those images to count how big are the features, how many of those features are in the image, so you can ultimately make a conclusion or determination about what's going on. This is used extensively in academic, government, and corporate research and uh, development environments. And it also has applicability in manufacturing and quality control. You can think about sort of like visual inspection on assembly lines as an example of where real-time microscopy image analysis is used. So what we have done is we have automated this workflow using machine learning and computer vision and Grafana to enable real-time or live analysis of these microscopy images. And this is important because we're able to reduce the cost by 80% in some cases and in some instances, and we can reduce the training time, the operational expertise, and we can accelerate the delivery of unbiased results from years, months to seconds in the energy, health, manufacturing, and transportation sectors. So here's a little bit of a snapshot of what we hope the future of real-time microscopy image analysis would be. Where we have on the right-hand side, we have a microscope control software, and we're looking at a sample. This is on an electron microscope, so it's grayscale, but it could be color as well. And when we see the red boxes, those are automatically being drawn on top of our control software, and we're counting the black dots that are there. So we're basically counting and sizing those red boxes. On the left-hand side, then we have how many of those defects are we see in the sample as we're moving around and looking at this. And then we see over time that there's this trend increasing in our defect size. And that trend is an example of the kind of conclusion or analysis that ultimately Kevin in his research and in real-time microscopy analysis, you're looking for. So that's the future. Where are we currently at with microscopy image analysis? Well, right now, it's kind of a manual, laborious, time-consuming, and tedious process. All those red boxes had to be drawn by hand by a human in some way, shape, or form. This also leads to massive delays in getting to your analysis because the acquisition is done in one location versus where the analysis is done is usually in a different location on a different machine. The microscopes themselves are generally in an unusual environment. There is no internet access for a lot of these microscopes. It's all offline, so you're very limited in what kind of compute you have available to you to do these kinds of processing. What we've also found, though, is that this is actually a unique sort of environment in a unique situation where everyone's experiment and everyone's analysis requires specialized visualizations, possibly different kinds of calculations and quantification things. And then also there's a variety of software being used to acquire these images. And they're both open and closed and have various degrees of documentation and, um, and accessibility from the APIs that are available. If you take one thing away from our presentation today is that we have some uniqueness problems. All right, so let's look at our unique workflow problem first. I already kind of mentioned this where you're at one location, you're at the microscope, and that's where the acquisition occurs. And so we can see here on the left-hand side, we've acquired those grayscale images. You collect them from your microscope. Generally, you then walk to another computer. You take those with you in some way, shape, or form, and you do your quantification. So let's go back to Kevin for just a moment and imagine that you acquired these images and your job now, in order to win the Nobel Prize on the far left-hand side, is to go through and to count 
each of those black dots and draw little boxes around there and then go back and count those boxes and then also measure the size of the boxes so that you can eventually get your analysis and make your conclusions. You do that for one image and that takes anywhere from two to 20 minutes depending on how um, carefully you look at the images and how fast and proficient you are at the process. But you've acquired not only one image, but thousands of images over the course of multiple sessions of using these microscopes. And each of these stages happens at a different computer and that requires massive delays. In some cases, you have issues where you're transferring the files via a floppy disk in, in situation. So let's take another look at this problem and our unique situation from our environment. So as I mentioned earlier, our microscopes are in these enclosed or what we call network constrained environments. They range anywhere in price from a couple thousand dollars all the way up to tens to maybe even hundreds of millions of dollars. You don't want those microscopes on the internet. You don't want anybody randomly coming in and using your microscope in those cases. Sometimes the microscopes are of a legacy generation of software and computers and hardware such they don't have internet necessarily. So what you generally do is you go, you collect a, a stack of images, you transfer them some way, some shape or form around the firewall or sneaker net them to your computer in some way, shape or form from there. However, on the other end of the spectrum, we have our cloud-based development and distribution. This is where a lot of users all have familiarity. Everyone knows about a web browser. We're using a web browser today, for example. All of these things, people are familiar with. So how do we bridge that gap in that we don't have an uh, access to compute facilities, but we have this familiarization and all these wonderful tools that are available to us in the cloud and other high performance computing institutes and infrastructure. So this unique problem then requires a unique solution. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna combine edge computing devices with machine learning and web technologies so that we gain the advantages of that familiarity with the cloud infrastructure, but we can also do it in our closed environment. So from this unique solution, we have our Theoscope concept. So this is kind of what we envisioned this working and how we envisioned it coming to life. We have our edge computing device and on the edge computing device in green here is where our models will be running and they will be used to automate the uh, quantitation of those black dots in our images. We store that data in a time series database on the edge computing device. This can be connected to our microscope and acquisition PC using uh, a local area network or USB. If we're fortunate enough to have uh, internet access in these environments, and there is a growing number and increasing number of microscopes that do have that, we can then use additional computational resources in the cloud, but also do over the air updates on our edge computing device. So we've called this the Theoscope. So the next question then is, why did we pick Grafana for this platform? And while we saw a little bit earlier that we have this unique situation where every single experiment requires some kind of customization, different visualizations, but also we have image data and we have a variety of data sources that are involved and they all have different kinds of data. So there's visualization, customization and heterogeneous data sources. That to me means Grafana. So, I'm going to pitch it over to Mikhail to talk about, well, how did we use Grafana as a platform to make that Theoscope concept a reality? Thank you, Chris. It was impressive. So let's take a look now at the FAIR application plugin, the one which we are using as a Grafana as a platform. And we created a special FAIR application, which consists of data sources and multiple various panels. First of all is the FAIR API data source which connect to the custom web API using REST API and interacts with the FAIR platform. And to allow users to do customization, uh, uh, create any uh, dashboards they are looking for, for their specific workflows, we created different panels. One of them is acquisition panel, which allows them to capture the images from the microscope, model management panel, which allows to use different models for the capture later on, the vision panel to review captured images, navigation to look back in time and see what was captured before and uh, review all the scientific experiments they did, time synchronization panel. It's a special panel to 
check the time on a microscope is the same as in the database and in the browser. So because all of them have to be in sync to provide real time experience, feedback submission panel. As Chris uh, said, uh, some of the experiments, they in um, network constrained environments and you cannot send this, this uh, feedback creating the issue in the GitHub or send a Slack message in a normal way, how we used to do it in the cloud. So we create this feedback submission panel when all the submission, all the feedback, like reviews, images, and feature requests, they create in the database. And as soon as, as soon as the device connected to the network, they're going to be sent out to us and we can review them, create these additional features in the next release. And then when the device will come back to us, we can do the upgrade and give it back to the clients. And another one is the data management panel. It's a special panel which allows us to remove the data, the old data, because we have a limited uh, performance on the data, on the edge computing devices, we have a limited disk space. So we have to use the special data management panel to remove the old data to allow users to capture the new data. And this is how our FAI application looks like. You have to start from normally in the Grafana, you start from a home dashboard. And this is our home dashboard. It provide you provide you all the information you need to start working with the FAIR platform. It shows you all the model management, all the models you created, the job management. It's provide you the calendar functionality where you can review experiments you did. And it gives you information about CPU, GPU, and disk usage, and provides information about the device name and time synchronization. If, if it's working properly or not. And now let's take a look at the demo of this application and we can take a closer look to the each individual panels. Great, thank you. Um, so what we'll do here is we're actually gonna go to one of our edge computing devices as we saw, and thank you Mikhail for walking through the panels. We're back onto the home page here. We have a couple different models loaded up and ready to go. We've got our YOLO COCO model we like to call it. And it's currently running on the GPU that is embedded into our edge computing device. And we're gonna go ahead and start an acquisition. And the first thing we're gonna do is we are gonna to go to Times Square. So I'm gonna start a screen acquisition here and we're gonna go and we're gonna check out what is happening in Times Square. And we'll give it a moment here to fire up. We have our preview screen under the acquisition panel. Mikhail will talk a little bit more in the future here about how this all works, but I'm moving the field of view so we can focus the model in on a particular situation while it's negotiating. And actually, let me go ahead and stop. And we're gonna make this go a little bit faster today just because of the way we're um, operating and in this demo. So we're gonna start the screen acquisition and we'll try this again. Oh yeah, I forgot to change that. And now we're gonna, it's negotiating the camera acquisition. And while it's doing that, I will adjust the field of view as I mentioned earlier. And here we should see on the right-hand side in a matter of moments, we have Times Square and it's identifying various boxes. So the model we're using in this case is what we call a Cocoa model. It's freely available. You can get it off of GitHub. And it has 80 classes already defined in them of everyday objects. And so what we're seeing here is it's identifying possibly variety of things, cars, buses, maybe some people, way, shape and form on there. But we can also see that more closely under here as we scroll down on the dashboard, we see it says, it's finding a car, it's finding a person, it's finding it some TVs, and it's finding a bus and some trucks. We also see in our time series plots here that we have our various, what is the model doing? How well is it performing? And how many different objects is it seeing? So with that under our belt, we can go ahead and stop this and we're gonna reuse the same model and we're gonna go now to a different location. So it becomes very fluid and very easy to go from one instrument to another instrument or from one feed to another feed. And today we're gonna to now go over to Tokyo. And so here, this is a YouTube video that's live streaming a very famous intersection in Tokyo. And we are going to use once again, our um, field of view to sort of zoom in and focus in a little bit on this sort of information. And we can see here because the camera angle is a little bit different, it's a little bit closer, the model is working a little bit better in this case, because we have, uh, it's seeing our traffic light, we have some people, there's some cars, at least that's what I'm calling them. Oh, and it says it's seeing very similar things. We also can see how confident the model is in these identifications as we're doing that. 
once you're done with the acquisitions and you're doing this in real time, these are live feeds that we just pulled off the internet, for example, we'll go ahead and stop our feeds and we're gonna go back to the home page. I'll discard my changes and we're going back to the home screen. And if we look down here at our calendar, we have our new images listed that we've collected for today. So if I go to now, it takes us to the examine dashboard where we can do a deep dive into what actually happened in those models. And here we get to use some of the time management processes and interfaces that are available within the Grafana dash, um, system and platform and dashboards. So I'm gonna zoom in on what did we actually look at for today. And we have the navigation panel that allows me to go through in time and skip to various screen so we can go from New York to Tokyo very quickly back and forth several frames and forward in several frames later on we also can see what all the bounding boxes and various metrics that are related to each of those we can also go back and we can uncrop our thing and we can move around and see what those things are looking like at those times um, as we're doing the acquisition so we can go back and I would like to go back to the home page I want to show one more thing because those that of course was our um, acquisition process in real-time streaming, but we've been talking about real-time microscopy image analysis and the demo hasn't really shown that. So instead, we're gonna go back to some images that we took earlier today on our electron, on our optical microscope that was not connected to the internet, so it couldn't do a live stream of it, but we did take some videos of it. And here are some red blood cells using a different model in a different system, but using a very similar workflow for the acquisition, we can go back through and we can see here yet again, we can zoom in, we can go back in time, we can go forward in time, and we can look at the different uh, images that were acquired and we can see, okay, what was our size distribution, what was happening in these various sort of images. And we can start making those analyses and those conclusions about are those cells red blood cells? Are they cancerous, not cancerous as an example? And start doing some of that quantitation and discovery that we talked about earlier in the workflow. And I was able to do all of that in a matter of minutes slash seconds, as opposed to having to draw those boxes all of myself. So with that, I'm going to conclude the demo and hand it back over to Mikhail, who's gonna walk through how did we actually do this using these various panels and getting into some of the details on how that works. Now let's take a look why we actually choose Grafana for this project more closely after we saw the demo, we saw the homepage, what allows us to do. And we are talking now about the power of the panels. As you can see in the demo, we have a custom panels and mix them with the table panels, with the different chart panels. So this is the slide to showcase three different custom panels we created specifically for FIA. One of them is a model management which has two different parts. One of them is the managing the models themselves. Another one is uploading the weight files. Weight files used for the models and you can load them into CPU or GPU. It all depends on the resources you have. This is why on the homepage, as we showcased before, you have this chart, uh, you have a pie chart to display how many CPU, GPU and disk space you use. And if there is any GPU left, to load the model to, you can choose it using the sliders. And uh, on this slide, you can see there is a CPU from zero to one, and we can choose uh, with the select box specific weight files to load the models. Also Grafana allows us to use white interface, the light one or dark one, which is great for different conditions scientists working on. Another panel showcase here is a job management panel. It is the panel we use to export scientific results, which can take gigabytes of data, so it's done using asynchronous background jobs. As soon as you do the navigation panel, you choose the interval you wanted. You can, uh, with a special drawers components, you can actually uh, provide different uh, parameters. What do you, you want to export, click export, and then it's processed it, and you can download it all in real time. And then it's loaded in a specific images format, and you can process it with using additional software if you need to. Now let's take a look uh, one more time at this real-time acquisition what Chris showcased. So we have a uh, Japan or Times Square. It's a time, time Square. And uh, on the left side, you have an acquisition panel. It's a custom panel, which allows us to use various parameters. What is our field of view wanted to build? Like what kind of interface we capture? What is our scale bar 
of this capture and provide you different information about the model itself to make sure that you're using the right models for this particular experiment. On the right side, you see the custom vision panel, which takes the images from the database, uh, drawing on them the bounding box, which was calculated using this specific model. And you can see the result of that. And using these custom options, you can enable, disable, show with bounding boxes. You can show the boxes ID. You can see cropped and cropped version. And you can export individual image directly from the Grafana. Also, we use this additional default components to show the, to show the time series of the model latency and uh, different classes as well using uh, these tables, which is highly customizable and scientific personnel can move them around, adjust to their working environment and to, or to their use case. Now let's take a uh, closer look at the vision and navigation panel. As uh, Chris showed before, we can review the experiment we did before, and this is Japan. This navigation panel, it was specifically designed to be provide the same look and feel as the YouTube videos, where you can go backward, go front, you can uh, circle video around, and there is a special export all button, which creates this specific export job, in which in background will export your results, and you can take your scientific experiment for, for the processing, and later on, you can remove this data to free your disk space. As you can see, we use additional time series panels and show all the bounding boxes as in default panels as well. So this, all these panels are highly customizable. They have tens of different options, how you can customize the look and feel of all the bounding boxes. In our environment, we use the red colors. You can choose any color you want. You can use different thickness. And uh, it provides you this experience with the graph using Grafana that you can adjust it any way you like uh, and uh, to your specific use case. In this uh, for Thea, we actually developed two additional, one additional data source and one panel, which is open source uh, panels, and they allow uh, uh, environment data source. It's a part of the Grafana marketplace already. Data manipulation form is under Grafana review, and I hope it's going to be available for everyone soon. So environment data source, it's a unique kind of data source, which provides you uh, with uh, uh, glimpse, uh, you look what kind of environment variables uh, has uh, was exposed to the Grafana container if you run it in a Docker or it's uh, to Grafana process if you run it on a host. Because there is no other way you can know what kind of environments you run it using Grafana. So we create this environment data source. It show you all the environment variables and they can be filtered as well using special string because you don't want to expose too much data to the end users in Grafana. And using this, uh, and you can see here, it uh, has environment for Balenia Cloud. And uh, we, one of the way you use them just to display the name of the device. So you to make sure that you're using the right device for your right experiment. Another panel as a data manipulation form panel allows us to submit the feedback to the database. Normally Grafana provide you one way one way to interact with the data, just to showcase the data. What data manipulation form does, it allows you to create this custom form and input the data to the database, send it to the REST API, and then you can process, uh, further process them. And on this particular showcase, you can, see, you can submit a ticket. You can see number of tickets submitted, total tickets, and what kind of tickets were submitted. And then we can, when we take this device back, as I mentioned before, or they send it to us in real time, we can see what is the feature request you know, you, our users want, or what kind of improvements, right? Or if there is any issues, which we should pay attention to in the next versions. Thank you, Mikhail, that's great. So what we've been able to do with this platform and using these various panels that he's developed for us at Thea Scientific as part of his uh, collaboration is we've done in several different deployments. So we showed that we could go to Times Square, we can go to Tokyo, but we've also gone to other places like the University of Michigan in Ann Arbor. In the upper right-hand corner, we see that we have our electron microscope, and then we have what is known as an ion beam that's basically a, a simulating radiation. It's putting radiation onto a sample, and we're watching those defects grow over time. You can see in the upper right-hand corner of the monitor, there's our uh, early version of the software, as well as a an example of a 
a dashboard that was specifically designed for that particular kind of experiment. And we can see that we're using some legacy software there in the, in the, in the lower left-hand corner. We've also deployed at the Idaho National Laboratory in Idaho Falls, um, Idaho of all places. And we have our electron microscope here is on the left-hand side. We can see that we have three different dashboards now running. And this means that we're running three different models at the same time on WAF of a cluster of devices that we've connected to the microscope. But we also notice that on the right-hand side, this software looks a lot different than this other software, but we're able to do it because we're using these web technologies. We're using this edge computing devices, and we're using uh, Grafana as a platform to make this happen so that all the user has to do is pull up the web browser and is able to go to the web address for that edge computing device to see this in action. In the lower right-hand corner, we have our visit and our deployment uh, at the Argonne National Laboratory in Lamont, Illinois, which is just outside of Chicago. Here again, we've got our electron microscope on the left-hand side, we've got our software on the right-hand side, and we've got yet another different kind of software running the microscope in the center, uh, monitor there in the center. We see that we have a different panel uh, and dashboard going on here on this one, but each one of these was a different experiment, and each one our concept and our platform was able to adapt to. On the left-hand side, while we were at Argonne National Lab, we were also able to broadcast this data and these dashboards into sort of um, sort of point of use or into a large screen TV that was posted on the outside of the uh, of the microscope so that people are not associated with the microscope can still see what's going on and getting that real time microscopy image analysis data without having to wait months, days, weeks, years for that kind of results to occur. And in this little inset down here, I just want to highlight, here's an example where we deployed up to nine of these, or 11 of these edge computing devices on the Argon microscope. And we have, so we could run in theory up to 11 uh, models at the same time and have 11 different dashboards showing all the information coming through. So that's like having 11 graduate students sitting there furiously drawing little boxes around those black dots. So with that, I'd like to thank not only the audience, but also every some of our collaborators and the Department of Energy who has funded this resource through a variety of small business uh, innovative research grants and other grants with the University of Wisconsin and University of Michigan. Specifically, I'd like to thank the University of Michigan, Gnome Lab in Wisconsin. They were instrumental in getting this project started and also providing the models and creating the models that were used to draw all the boxes that we see in these images. And once again, thanking Argon for the excellent uh, collaboration and, and willingness to allow us to hook up those 11 devices to their microscopes and make this all and make this demonstration happen. So with that, I'd like to thank everyone for joining and we'll be happy to answer any questions. Hello, everyone. Hello, everyone. Uh, so we've got a couple of questions. Uh, I hope everyone enjoyed the, the demo and the presentation. Our first question is, where do we feel like the project goes from here? Is there a hope for further technical or clinical uh, adoption? And the answer is yes, we love to go into the medical field, but that is a very well-regulated, uh, rightfully so, and importantly, regulated process. So. That is sort of a, a couple, a little bit further away down the road. We also have done some stuff with live cell imaging. We're also looking at doing um, sort of QA in semiconducting processes and, uh, and development in that way. So we are looking for collaborations. If anyone has some images, if your black dots look like our black dots, we would love to talk to you um, when it comes to that. And we would love to, to do that um, from a project. The next question we have is, um, how long did it take us to do this? Right? How, long, how long has this been in development? Um, we started this project, we started the company, we started the rest of this uh, about two years ago, almost to the day actually was the first time I went up to University of Michigan and we ran what would be the prototype software for it. But it was really um, the inclusion and collaboration with Mikhail that really accelerated it. So I'll let him sort of jump in and say, Mikhail, how long did it take you to make those panels? <laughs> Um, as we wrote in our article in Grafana blog, when we provide all, all kind of details how we did it, the initial MVP product we created uh, in two months, which is normally it's a, it's a good time to develop the panels, to create the data source and uh, get it up and running. And now we continue to improve it. 
And as, as in the demo, as you, everybody can see, it was the latest feature we just added like a couple of days ago, some of them. So with that, we're out of time. I would like to I'll answer any more questions. We're in the Slack channel and we'll go from there. So thank you again for watching and have a great day. Thank you, everyone.